in science and uh, it was like very ancient science and people were using this uh, cryptic language. Uh, but when we, are, we cannot discuss, of course, all the history, but uh, uh, many uh, historical events have changed the course due to this cryptography. The very important event, what uh, touched my heart when I was going through the history, history of the cryptography is the execution of Queen Mary of Scott, which, who was accused of plotting assassination of Queen Elizabeth. So uh, Queen Elizabeth, uh, actually, uh, it's, it actually it's, uh, it's in the 15th century's example. And uh, we will see that how beautifully the cryptography has been used. And um, it's not only the cryptography, but how uh, uh, what, what we can say is uh, the uh, beautifully the role of uh, analysis played into this and entire course uh, is, uh, of the history has changed so uh, on the morning of October 1586 Queen Mary was escorted by the guards in the crowd of Portingai castle why she was she was in the prison for so many years and finally she was being getting executed for plotting against the Queen uh, Elizabeth, England uh, Queen Elizabeth. Oh, I mean, uh, uh, actually, Queen Mary was uh, 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 Elizabeth's sister, and uh, you know, she was also Queen of Scots. It was not easy for Queen uh, Elizabeth to, you know, uh, uh, give an order for the assassination. Um, but Queen Elizabeth uh, has a very, uh, what you said, dynamic uh, principal secretary of. Uh, Sir Francis Walsingham. Sir Francis was uh, knowing there is something going on between uh, the Queen uh, Mary and uh, some of her Catholic supporters uh, while she was in the prison. Uh, and uh, there was uh, 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 Queen uh, uh, Mary's uh, uh, they connect for the to the uh, outside world was the Anthony Balbington. And there was some communication going on between the Anthony and Balvington. Uh, he was understanding, but you know, uh, he was telling Queen uh, Elizabeth that there, there is a plot going on. But uh, Queen uh, uh, Elizabeth was uh, very uh, hesitant to uh, uh, go for any order. Then uh, uh, Francis was uh, not only the principal secretary, but he was a very good spy, and you know. Like uh, then he decided to dig on to uh, this uh, entire plot, and then uh, uh, he uh, trapped Gilbert, and he said that uh, because Gilbert was a messenger between the Anthony Balbington and Queen Mary of Scots, and he was uh, like uh, uh, you know uh, transporting the mess uh, messages or the letters between uh, Anthony and the uh, uh, Elizabeth, uh, sorry, Queen Mary. So he trapped him, and he said, "Like, look, I, uh, uh, I will, uh, you know, I know that there is something going on between uh, the uh, Catholic uh, supporters and uh, Queen Mary. Uh, so if you will uh, uh, be on our side, you will be, you know, uh, forgiven." Then, without knowing Anthony uh, Balbinton and Queen Mary, he uh, he became a double messenger. So what he was doing. The messages were uh, 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 getting transported from Queen's Mary into barrel or you know, in some uh, form of uh, wrapped messages. And uh, these messages uh, he was giving to Sir uh, Francis. And later, those same messages he was giving to Anthony. Uh, sir, uh, let it be the previous slide. Anthony uh, uh, Balmington. Then uh, uh, Sir... Uh, the, these all messages were, uh, we can say, double coated, that they were wrapped into uh, barrels, and plus they were uh, not into the. They were they, there were some uh, nomenclature used in those letters. We will see in the next slide what are those nomenclatures. And uh, so uh, Francis decided to hire a Thomas, who was the crypt analyst, very famous crypt analyst. And uh, he was uh, brought to England, and he was appointed as a professor in the university, just to avoid, uh, you know, uh, the leak that there is, and 
uh, some uh, kind of script analysis of the letters is going on. So after a lot of efforts and by using the different techniques, uh, Thomas could able to uh, decipher those uh, messages, broke those messages, and then plot was open and it was. Uh, it could able uh, Sir Francis could able to present it in front of Elizabeth, and now we can see that on 8 February 9, 1587, uh, Queen's Mary was uh, of Scot was executed. So we can go to the next slide uh, and see what is that uh, plot uh, late uh, nomenclature. You can see that C is denoted by one uh, symbol, D is denoted by another symbol. Four, uh, four is there with uh, some letter, you know. So these uh, kind of uh, nomenclature or the uh, kind of a cryptographic form has been used uh, by the um, Queen Mary. She was very smart. She was very smart. And uh, just think that, you know, if uh, this letter would have been not deciphered by the uh, Thomas, then the history would have been something really very different. And uh, we could have say, uh, seen many changes but queen mary could have been uh, you know uh, a me, uh, the, instead of scott she would have been the uh, queen of uh, england and uh, queen elizabeth uh, would have been executed these ciphers were uh, uh, broken by uh, the uh, uh, thomas uh, by using the crypt, uh, frequency crypt analysis so before a few years yes definitely uh, the cipher uh, uh, classified ciphers were of uh, some you know, a simplified version, we can say that. Uh, they could able to break uh, by using the frequency analysis. But nowadays, we are using modern ciphers. We are using uh, finite fields and, you know, number theory. And uh, the bro breaking of the ciphers by using frequency analysis is now a dream. It's like, we can't do it. We can go to the next uh, slide and see that what is the different uh, second example uh, I wanted to discuss. So you must be knowing this. This is very famous Enigma machine, and this Enigma machine has played a, you know, it's like a very uh, important role in World War One and World War Two. Of course, in World War One, uh, Enigma machine was uh, used, uh, but not extensively the way it was used in uh, World War Two. And in World War One, there was a war between the uh, Poland and the uh, the Germans, and uh, Germans were using this Enigma machine and. This uh, machine, um, uh, you can say the architecture of this machine was disclosed to one Polish uh, crypt analysis, Marian, and he was trying to crypt analysis his first time, but he failed. Uh, then uh, this uh, machine actually had uh, two forms. One is uh, the commercially used form, and another one was the um, uh, uh, was used in the defense services or the, by the military. Of course, there was a you know the war was called off, and then uh, this Polish uh, cryptanalyst uh, stopped uh, 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 analyzing this machine, and then uh, there was no further uh, you know research uh, has been uh, done on this machine. During World War II, uh, this same machine was not not used. There was a, a, a complex modification has been done on this uh, Enigma machine, and then later. It was, uh, you know, used like uh, uh, definitely. It was not uh, open to the public. The commercial machines were uh, different, and the machines those were used by uh, the military people. They were very complex. Uh, again, uh, this, uh, you know, uh, we know that the Germans were uh, doing extremely well in uh, World War Two, and they were not even having the hint that these machines design has been compromised and this was compromised by hans their own uh, army official and it was handed over to the uh, british uh, as we all know the alan tuning who is the greatest scientist and a crypt analysis uh, was very good in mathematics and he was brought to the uh, government code and cipher school in uh, bletchley and he started crypt analyzing this uh, uh, machine and then uh, you know uh, uh, they could have to break this machine here because uh, you know uh, when uh, in World War II, uh, when they were talking about deciphering the messages, um, the messages were getting changed or the key was getting changed time to time. So instead of uh, cracking uh, the messages that time, 
it was best to crack the machine. That's what Alan Turing thought. And you know, and we all know the rest history that German lost the war, and uh, yeah, and uh, uh, that the history has been completely changed. And I know that you are you might be uh, 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 known about this movie made on Alan Turing and this entire uh, uh, World War II uh, and anal crypt analysis of. Uh, uh, the uh, Enigma machine was the imitation game, and it's very famous. So uh, uh, we can go to the next slide, and uh, you know, uh, while discussing all these things of uh, history and uh, some evidences, some uh, interesting, you know, um, uh, events, uh, you might have now uh, got uh, excited to know more about this uh, uh, cryptography because. Uh, it's very important to have you know interest into this subject, and uh, uh, then only you can do uh, great inventions and uh, great things in this subject. So uh, I I feel that you might have been started uh, feeling interest, and uh, you can read the book uh, code book the code book written by Simon Singh, which uh, has covered uh, you know many historical events about uh, the cryptography and how these. Uh, one M cipher and how it is breaking and what are the different efforts? How the uh, entire whole uh, course of the history has been changed? You can uh, read out into that book. So uh, now, as we have uh, seen some of uh, these uh, uh, history events, we will move on to the fundamentals of cryptography. What exactly this is cryptography? Uh, on what principle it is based? What are the different terminologies it used? Why people are talking about cryptography too much uh, nowadays? Uh, we will see that uh, we will uh, now entering into the smart words. We are talking about smart cities, connected cars, so many things. And uh, everywhere, the security is now a major concern because we are seeing that there are a lot of attacks, that like ransomware attacks, malware attacks, and you know somebody stealing our information is happening. And um, as far as my experience is concerned and my reading is concerned, it is happening because not because the cryptography is getting uh, cracked. Many times it is because there is a flaw in application of cryptography. How, if you are applying cryptography uh, the way it is advisable, then uh, you know it's very uh, rare chance that uh, the messages are getting cracked. Because uh, uh, we will see in uh, further discussion when we will talk about advanced uh, cryptographic techniques. So first, what is cryptography? So it is an, or uh, we can say it's a tool or it's a method where we are trying to protect our sensitive information, uh, which we want to send it to the intended party. Well, I want to send a message to my friend. I don't want anybody to read it. So of course, I'll try to put some protection around it. And um, that's what the cryptography is meant for. So Karkov was a, a famous scientist, and he put some principle. This principle are, uh, of course, not uh, all the principles are useful, but some of them are still useful, uh, and people are following them. So uh, you can read uh, from this uh, slide that uh, the system must be practical, because uh, the uh, systems that we're using were the electromagnetic hardware systems. But nowadays, we are using algorithms, right? So uh, what he said in the second uh, principle that, it is not uh, necessary or important that your system is secret. Because what happened in, um, in uh, this World War II was uh, the uh, design of the uh, their Enigma machine was compromised. And that's why uh, they could able to decipher the, uh, or the crack the machine, uh, or the machine, right? So what he suggested that the uh, algorithm or, or the machine should not be secret, but uh, the very simple part that is called as the key uh, should be secret and key should be very handy and you know it should not be very long uh, and uh, we should uh, we should not uh, like it is not necessary that we have to write it somewhere and remember it because uh, the writing part can be you know landed uh, into enemy's uh, hand and then uh, there uh, are possibilities that uh, our uh, secrets can be revealed then uh, he also uh, talked about that uh, these you know it should be portable it should not require that very skilled person has to handle this uh, complete uh, web uh, uh, the machines so nowadays we can see that uh, the even uh, many people those who are not having the 
uh, great technical knowledge or you know in deep knowledge they can handle uh, the modern cryptographic uh, algorithm so these are some of the kirkops principles you can move on to the next slide so uh, we will see a few terms so that when i am talking about uh, the cryptography and uh, other things uh, it will be very easy i know you must have uh, uh, studied or read it somewhere so but just to refresh your knowledge i thought like we will have just quick uh, terminology uh, you know uh, used in the cryptography so one is the encryption of course it's a method which converts the information into the secret code and you know uh, that uh, true meaning of the information is hide so we are not so um, here what we are doing is we are not hiding the information we are changing the form of the information so that it will become like a, you know what what this rubbish thing is going on so this is what the uh, cryptography is but if you will talk about the steganography that is also used in queen mary's uh, case so she has used the concealing like into the barrel and also uh, the nomenclature or the different symbols so steganography is art of concealing the information we are not changing the form of information but uh, you know by using something like a uh, text or the videos or audio we are trying to cover it so that nobody will uh, feel that there is an uh, some hidden information inside that although this technique is very old and uh, very few places people are using it and nowadays people are moving towards the modern cryptographic techniques more so plain text is of course uh, you know like uh, information that can be read by machine or you know it's like a, what we want to convey to each other cipher text is of course a scrambled form a non intelligent form of the message uh, key and key length is an important aspect of the cryptography as uh, kirkhoff is also said that uh, algorithm we are not keeping it a uh, secret if we, even if it is uh, known to many people or everybody uh, key should be secret so key uh, is there are uh, you know like uh, you know, various uh, requirements for the keys uh, you are also getting you know it's like a password we are getting we are getting different uh, uh, guidelines how to use the password so key is normally uh, should be very uh, random string of bits and uh, which is used to uh, convert into non intelligent form and the intel uh, intelligent form so it used for both uh, uh, encryption and for decryption uh, so uh, when i'm talking about the key and the key length um, uh, it's very important uh, because you know uh, key length should not be very short key length will not should not be very long otherwise um, there are chances you know it will take some time to uh, decrypt the message and length will be so it is very complicated so there are some guidelines given to uh, Uh, the user how to what should be the key length you you might have uh, learned about aes or des you know there they have suggested that use 64 bit or use 128 bit or use uh, 256 bit of keys uh when we are talking about the key there is important thing that the key should be random and uh, it's all together a different branch where the researchers are working on randomizing uh the uh, or uh, to generate the random uh, stream so uh, normally uh, whatever we are uh, we are writing uh, we know that uh, you know we think it's random and uh, you may say that it's random but if you will uh, pass it uh, through the statistical testing you will come to know it's not that random i mean whatever i have uh, typed or whatever i thought it's a random it's not that random and uh, there are some uh, sources Uh, natural sources like tossing a, co a coin and you know thermal emissions uh, where uh, the uh, the uh, generation of the string is uh, random uh, but uh, many a times some sources uh, is those generate the pseudo random uh, uh, strings um, the problem is pseudo random is uh, not that uh, you know it can be broken so uh, Uh, as i stated the randomization or generation of the random string is a different science altogether and it's a different branch many researchers are working on uh, this and currently uh, you might have heard about is the quantum quantum uh, uh, key uh, generation is uh, you know uh, uh, one of the uh, 
very popular areas where people are uh, working on you know generation of the uh, random key uh, by using the quantum uh, encryption algorithm is uh, again a mathematical or the uh, process or the algorithm to perform and generate the encryption uh, data uh, very important thing as we have discussed discussed in the historical event was the crypt analysis i was uh, con uh, continuously talking about that uh, if this would have not been crypt analyzed then history would have been different so you know uh, actual term or the umbrella is cryptology which comprises cryptography that is uh, the hiding or the transforming uh, uh, the uh, messages into the non intelligent form and uh, crypt analysis is the another very important branch and you can say that actually cryptographers and crypt analysts are enemies because crypt analysts are trying to break the system and they they are to find out the flaws in the system uh, let me clarify here crypt analysts are not hackers uh, we know all about hackers that you know there are white hat hackers gray hat hackers and black hat hackers uh, and their motives and intentions are different here crypt analysts are uh, we will not go into the cyber uh, uh, cyber security uh, terms but i would just like to say because people normally get confused that crypt analyst and hackers are same so let me clarify here they are totally different crypt analyst are those who analyze the algorithm try to find out the mathematical structure what try to see what are the different flaws and show the cryptographer that see look these are the flaws and you have to make your system strong otherwise anybody can break it so uh, this both comprises like uh, cryptography and crypt analyze together is the cryptology so we will move on to the next slide so what are the uh, so uh, we have seen some classical things and you know some terminologies but uh, what are the different uh, goals of this modern uh, cryptography and uh, these there are few goals i have uh, like four goals i have uh, uh, noted out here and you must be all knowing and knowingly and knowingly we are using it you know so confidentiality is like you know we are we wanted to uh, protect our information from the unauthorized people unauthorized access uh, on the internet so we wanted to achieve the confidentiality by cryptography uh, availability is something uh, that you know like the information should be available to the uh, to the party i want to send i mean uh, just imagine what i i always think like you know i uh, found a, you know heap of uh, like um, uh, gold and i decided that this should be uh, uh, for my you know uh, grandsons and grandsons and i decided to put it down into the tree dig it dig and all put all the coins inside that and then uh, i hid it and i didn't give any information about this coins to anybody then it's it's as good as it is not available it's the same thing is happening if your data is not it is of no use right so uh, cryptography's main goal is uh, is to uh, make it available to the trusted party uh, when uh, the third goal is uh, integ uh, integrity when we are talking about uh, like uh, transferring information over the untrusted medium information may get changed yes it will definitely people will try hacker will try that they will change the information and you know we will receive something else which uh, can lead us to the wrong things so integrity is a very important part in uh, case of uh, cryptography and it is uh, trying to achieve that goal uh, uh, another goal is non repudiation which is possible in case of uh, cryptography means uh, you know like uh, i'm placing an order uh, to an um, uh, shop uh, like merchant and saying like you know i want to buy this and uh, that merchant decided to manufacture something and uh, then de i am denying this i i have not placed this order so it is of a loss right for that merchant and same thing can happen uh, in either case so non repudiation achieve uh, uh, this goal of you know that yes you have placed an order or you have confirmed this transactions and all another goal which i think it's very important uh, for, for for the cryptography in recent days is the authentication like uh, who is that person or who is that system uh, so it is very important to uh, know uh, uh, whether uh, uh, the 
uh, communication is, has been established between the right person or not, or the right system or not. So that is another goal of modern cryptography. We can move to the next slide. OK, so a growth of the cryptography is uh, I have uh, purposely uh, you know, uh, like, uh, started with the World War II because it's, it has a long ancient history. And it will be, it is, it's almost about a day I'll talk about this history. So I'll put it down to the major topics that you know how the cryptography growth had happened. And uh, we all know World War II is the Enigma machine, which was uh, the electromagnet uh, uh, mechanical machine. Then um, uh, the NIST, uh, the uh, National Institute of Science and uh, Technology, uh, before it was NSA. And you know uh, they have uh, asked uh, Mr. Fiestel or Professor Fiestel to uh, build an algorithm uh, which, ha which, ha which he has come up with the data encryption uh, standard in 1976, which was the first symmetry key algorithm. And the key size, what first of was decided, was 64 bits. But you know, uh, NIST has their own uh, you know, standards and own uh, thinking about uh, the uh, uh, entire thing. So they decided to cut it down to 56. Uh, reason is still unknown, uh, but yeah. Then uh, in 1976, uh, Davey Hellman was working with one of his uh, students, and uh, he they have uh, invented public key cryptography. And uh, that time itself, they have proposed uh, the digital signature. Later, by uh, Ron uh, uh, Rivest and uh, Martin and uh, Shamir has come up with the RSA algorithm in 1976. And uh, digital uh, certificate was also invented in 1978. Then uh, RSA was uh, like uh, Ron is uh, like a very famous uh, cryptographer uh, who was working on a uh, stream ciphers, and he invented RC4 in uh, 1987, and also uh, 1991 the MD hash was invented. So later, it was, you know, slowly there was a growth, and people started uh, reading about the complexity because. Uh, when we are talking about the um, uh, cryptography and cryptographic algorithms, their output, we have to think about complexity uh, uh, subject. And people started more working towards complexity, and they have then you know uh, come up with the quantum cryptography and uh, post quantum cryptography, and now research is uh, towards that because uh, quantum machines are there. And uh, Professor Shaw, uh, who is again a very renowned professor has actually broken the RSA scheme. And you know, uh, they show, he showed that it is possible uh, that uh, we can, uh, any length of the keys uh, RSA uh, can be broken. So uh, then uh, the community, entire community, uh, security community got scared. And then they decided to move on to the quantum uh, cryptography. Of course, there, the research is going on still, uh, still long. and. Uh, there are a lot of uh, well-known professors, even in India, they are working in cryptogra uh, quantum cryptography and post-quantum cryptography. And recently, you must have heard about you know, uh, ISRO with the quantum communication by Professor Urvashi uh, 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 Sina by uh, uh, Raman Research Institute. So research is happening in India, and it's really uh, happening happening way. I mean, uh, people are uh, taking a lot of effort and uh, you know, uh, trying to put uh, your their foot in the field of cryptography on the world's map. So we can move on to the next slide. Uh, so as we have, I was using some terms like you know, symmetric key and public key cryptography was invented by Ra. So what exactly is this? So I'll give you know very shortly. Many of you must have been known about this, but those who have not, I'll just shortly talk about it. So symmetric key cryptography is where uh, we have the cryptographic or uh, the uh, encryption algorithm. And we are using only one key. So this key will be available both receiver and the sender party. right? And we will uh, lock the data. And we will unlock the data by using the same. So uh, this is what the uh, symmetric key cryptography simple function is. Uh, famous. Uh, 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 symmetric key cryptograph encryption functions are DES, as I have already stated by Fiestel, right? Double DES, triple DES, and uh, there was a competition, uh, you know, because uh, this uh, there was uh, uh, continuous attacks uh, on the DES. 
people uh, like once the uh, any algorithm any cryptographic algorithm is announced publicly uh, all the people across the world in the cryptographic community they try to uh, see that we can how we can break this algorithm and how we can find out different flaws from this um, uh, algorithm and there were continuous attacks on this and uh, the ds was broken by different uh, cryptographers on a different ways so nist decided to launch an uh, you know competition uh, where uh, more than 20 people have uh, like uh, scientists have uh, participated and uh, advanced encryption standard that is aes was the finalist the name was something different based on you know uh, resumes the uh, the uh, cryptographer but later then uh, nist decided to name it as an advanced encryption standard it has a different and uh, i must say that is very strong algorithm people are trying they are they are trying on you know like continuously breaking this algorithm by different means and uh, there is not yet a clear uh, you know like clear break to this algorithm yes of course they achieve to certain um, uh, level but there is not yet uh, the clear cut uh, break to uh, aes again idea is another cipher uh, encryption algorithm but uh, which is you know uh, not, uh, open source uh, then uh, when we are talking about asymmetric key encryption uh, there are some problems you know like major problem in case of uh, symmetric key algorithm is how we can uh, transport this key as i have stated that uh, at the beginning uh, like uh, there are some communities you, you remember uh, those who are uh, still using the traditional methods and um, defense are one of them that you know they are still transferring the uh, keys uh, manually it's a major thing and key distribution is a major problem so uh, uh, davy hellman who worked with the, uh, his phd student had come up with a you know asymmetric key public key cryptography scheme and here what is happening is uh, there are two keys instead of one and one is public key, one is private key. Fine. So if I want to, um, if somebody wants to send message to me, anybody on this earth can log that message uh, by using my public key. And I can only, I can, uh, who is the intended receiver, can decrypt that message. So this uh, entire thing is based on the number theory, abstract uh, mathematics. And it's really a fun if you'll read uh, the uh, mathematics, uh, the number theory that uh, again, it's not something, you know, the recent uh, mathematics that people are thinking. It's format is the greatest scientist who was working on this. And he stated few of the uh, uh, theorems. The funny part I would like to say is uh, format has, uh, you know, uh, has written a lot of theorems in number theory, but none of them he has given the proof. And then it's a, uh, you know, it's a mathematical community that started uh, investigating, you know, the different, how are they, uh, because this, these are very famous uh, rules or uh, theorems by the formats and people are using them, people were using them. So uh, the community started, uh, uh, you know, finding out the proof for this theorem and format last theorem, I remember there was a, a famous scientist by the Princeton uh, University had stick, uh, took seven years to prove uh, format uh, lead, uh, last theorem. So he was continuously working on that, published a lot of paper, arranged a lot of conferences, but there were you know, continuous um, uh, inputs he was getting and that this part is left out, that part is left out, but he, uh, you know, and finally he could able to present the proof after seven years. So format is a, a very ancient scientist and no, 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 and this, uh, uh, entire public key uh, encryption is based on the uh, number theory. So a famous uh, RS algorithm, everybody knows, and you know, uh, uh, it uh, it was it ruled uh, uh, our uh, digital world almost for 30 years. So I've written paper also because I was very excited knowing about like nobody can break RSA for 30 years. I mean. It's really, you know, this scheme was foolproof. And then Shore has come up with this algorithm, Shore's algorithm, famous algorithm, and he, he broke this system. So, and now people are, you know, going towards the uh, quantum. 
so ecc is also elliptical curve cryptography is again a uh, well known field and people are working on that still elgamal is again the uh, another scheme of uh, a symmetric key encryption in case of the uh, hash function it's normally used for the um, integrity of the messages and you know like a message of any size will go into the compressed function and it will become a of a fixed size message which was encrypted and then it is transmitted along with the message and then it uh, can only uh, you know uh, by using some functionalities we can check whether the uh, message is not altered or a change so uh, uh, md5 sha are a few of the examples of you know hash functions we can move on to the next slide so what are the different applications of the cryptography so important application is as we know and since uh, uh, you know uh, decades or you know ancient histories we have seen that it was normally used by the different services and to keep the uh, kings and queens secrets intact uh, nowadays it is used by e-commerce internet banking digital money biometric digital signature cryptocurrency everybody knows that bitcoins and all blockchain e-voting you know no uh, secrecy in storage then we are now um, talking a lot about whatsapp privacy end to end encryption you must be heard about and you know so uh, social media uh, many places now cryptography is used even for the um, uh, legal processes we can move on to the next slide okay so i'm entering into the uh, now advanced field and uh, i'll not take much of your time because you know iot and iot uh, about iot i just wanted to give a touch why i wanted to enter into this um my intention is not to discuss about iot or iot how it works my intention is like whether we can use a uh, cryptography in iot or not so first we will uh, see the uh, you know iot architecture what exactly the iot is you, we all know it's a network of uh, separate but uniquely identified devices that uh, have a ability to talk to each other you know sometimes with uh, the help of human or sometimes with uh, without human interaction so there are uh, mainly four stages one is the first one is the sensor like connector devices normally those are sensors and the actuator uh, where they uh, sensors grab the information and then it uh, you know uh, convert the information uh, into the data set and process it uh, for the for, for the further uh, analysis in uh, then it has been uh, the second stage is the uh, process of the information collected from the previous stage and compressed into the optimal size so we ultimately what we are doing is we are trying to see that uh, you know uh, whatever uh, we are sensing or we are uh, accepting from these uh, sensors uh, can we convert into the action it is sometimes happened that you know automatically we the uh, 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 there is action taken by the uh, 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 you can say the devices but uh, sometimes we need a uh, human intervention right so some sensitive areas where we don't want uh, the uh, automatic action to be taken and then you know we wanted to analyze it more and then we uh, sometimes do it on a age uh, it or sometimes we take this data to the uh, like on the fourth stage we we take this data to the uh, data centers by using the high skill uh, humans and you know we process the data we analyze the data and then we take the action so this is what the uh, simple uh, iot uh, uh, architecture and uh, we uh, uh, we know that uh, or i would like to say when uh, you know uh, i have uh, 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 like uh, talking about one of the professor you might be heard about professor merchant about you know cognitive radio and uh, and you know the uh, security of the cognitive radio and all so uh, even about the white spaces and all so normally whenever uh, the scientists they work on some of the systems uh, they see whether the systems can work properly or not uh, it's like an you know uh, uh, overview like iot structure i'll give, take the example of iot structure so uh, they have implemented sensor some of the devices has been connected then age devices then they are collecting the information they are analyzing the information and then you know they are storing the information so many things they are doing the letter they have realized that oh this has to be protected i mean then you know we have to think about that and um, 
now the second phase of uh, their development normally comes with the sec uh, uh, security the same thing is happening in the iot and uh, we will see in the statistics we can move on to the next slide okay so before going for the statistics of uh, this uh, vulnerabilities and all we will see the what are the different applications of iot that we want wearable uh, smart homes uh, healthcare smart city agriculture automation i mean these are few um, there are many i mean you I'm, i more than i i must know that you are knowing uh, them like you know connected cars and autonomous cars so these are the terms that uh, uh, are more, more uh, nowadays in the uh, picture so we can move on to the next slide so these are some statistics about you know how big the uh, uh, iot is growing how to make our system uh, like uh, to make our world smart or you know uh we are deploying lot of iot devices and by 2018 there were seven iot devices by 2019 there were uh like 26.66 billion iot devices every second uh 127 iot devices are getting connected to the web so you can imagine you know like how fast the world is going and how many uh, uh devices are getting connected to the uh, untrusted medium so by 2025 more than 75 billion iot devices will be connected to the web so this is what the uh, estimation about iot devices and we can say that uh, when we are talking about iot uh, uh, you know uh, infrastructure and all uh, many uh, times our personal information is getting shared or most of the time our personal information is getting shared so we can move on to the next slide and see what are the vulnerabilities you know so uh, um, uh, a very important thing is like you know uh, uh, what iot devices they are using they are using the weak and guessable password or insecure uh, uh, network service insecure ecosystem lack of secure update mechanism and uh, so many you can read them out and uh, you know 90% of all iot traffic is unencrypted so people are uh, deploying uh, the devices but they are you know they wanted to achieve uh, like uh, healthcare industry or in uh, automate uh, 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 autonomous car industry or in uh, industry automation they are deploying um, iot devices and uh, they are unknowingly giving away the information so even you know we are wearing the uh, smart band we are giving all our information uh, onto the net is it encrypted are we thinking about it what what a uh, extreme can happen just a moment i'll have a water so uh, you know then uh, uh, there were so many attacks even on the iot devices we can move on to the next slide right why, why i was discussing about iot and you know iot thing is uh, i wanted to bring your attention to the lightweight uh, cryptography area so uh, as we know that uh, iot or some constrained devices uh, there are certain constraints like power memory uh, computational power uh, size even price and you know then uh, when we are talking about the standard uh, as Uh, or you know standard uh, encryption algorithm will they able to fit into that device that is one important of course not because they are meant for the servers or the you know desktops so it is very difficult uh, for uh, use to use them into the iot devices because iot devices many of you must be using uh so uh, scientists thought over it and then they had come up with uh, the branch called as lightweight cryptography so name itself uh, is you know the cryptographic solution for the constrained devices that is lightweight devices and uh, nist has started this process uh, there are several uh, lightweight uh, cryptographic algorithm available uh, as i stated that when we are uh, talking about you know uh, the cryptographic algorithms and they are once they are open into the uh, uh, platform uh people start attacking them and you know they say like to find out the uh, uh vulnerabilities into that and you know weaknesses in the uh, algorithm that is what the crypt analysis job is so nist launched the similar competition 
like uh, what they had did for the AES. Uh, they had launched the lightweight uh, cryptographic challenge, uh, I think, two, three years back. They are into now second stage of, uh, you know, uh, finalizing the ciphers. And I must say that, you know, scientists from our uh, India are participating into that, like Mrudul Nandi from ISI Kolkata. Uh, mostly, uh, you must be aware of uh, Indian Statistical Institute Kolkata, which is very famous for cryptography. And uh, Avik uh, from uh, the post-doctoral uh, student then Nilanjan uh, Datta, these are the scientists, they have submitted their entries and they could able to get through, you know, uh, and they have reached to the second stage. And we have our footprints into the, you know, world map. So uh, NIST has launched this process. Let's see, uh, they will come up with their own solutions and they will uh, give us uh, some standard uh, lightweight cryptographic algorithm. We can move on to the next slide. Okay, so what are the different uh, requirements for the lightweight cryptography? I have already said that these are, you know, resource constrained devices we are looking for. And uh, generally, they have low power, computational power, smaller memory size, smaller, uh, you know, lower power consumption, small in physical size, and also price should be very small. So uh, these are the requirements for the lightweight cryptography. We can move on to the next slide. Uh, some examples that I've already said that uh, people have developed some algorithm that is uh, present, ghost, then, uh, you know, uh, stream cipher are grain, trivium, trivium uh, then bean, hummingbird, then hash function like photon and quark. So uh, uh, people have worked on lightweight cryptography and they have some algorithm. Uh, there are, uh, my, oh, my own thesis was on uh, breaking of the trivium and we could actually break the trivium. So, you know, and the realistic time. So now this trime, once it is broken, it's of no use. So they have to either improve the complexity of that uh, particular algorithm or they uh, have to discard it. So normally it happens that, you know, people try to see if we can increase the complexity of the uh, algorithm, they will keep it. Otherwise they discard it and uh, uh, start from the, you know, uh, from the scratch, they will come up with a new algorithm. We can move on to the next slide. So these are uh, something about the uh, cryptography so you can uh, think about uh, you know uh, lightweight cryptography and your career in lightweight cryptography and you definitely can do a uh, few years back i have uh, come across one uh, conference uh, where uh, you know director general from nist was participating and he was talking about generation of the cryptographic algorithm or development or you know designing of the cryptographic algorithm uh, normally, the block uh, cipher or any cipher, when uh, scientists uh, start designing, uh, it takes complete process takes ten years. It's not something that you know uh, you can finish it in one or two days, or one or two months, or one or two years, and you have uh, the cryptographic algorithm. No, uh, step is like first two to three years they take to develop one you know model of uh, cryptographic algorithm. Then next, they test it by their own or internal team, another for two, uh, three years. And then once it is tested internally that there are no flaws, it goes public. And then there are, you know, like different uh, people, they attack on this and see whether it is really strong or not. So it takes another four, five years. And then, uh, you know, after all this extensive process, this cipher is a uh, the cryptographic algorithm is ready to use. So, you know, this is very, uh, cipher design is very long drawn process. And uh, normally when the cipher is designed, crypt analysis, because many of the ciphers, uh, you know, can't be broken by using the normal machine. We need supercomputers and, you know, high, uh, high performing machines. We need time, we need experts. So it's very costly and time consuming process. But as we are uh, moving on to the digital and the smart world, we need different ciphers because there are, you know, uh, the the crypt analyst uh, sitting all over the world and they are trying to break this cipher and they are trying to see the vulnerabilities. So how we can address all this? We can move on to the next slide. So, you know, uh, we have actually, this is uh, what I'm discussing currently is a uh, part of my PhD thesis. So uh, we thought of all these issues and then we have come up with uh, something called as, you know, embedding of uh, algorithm. Uh, the uh, to create the variation in already existing ciphers. 
so like uh, because you know like uh, existence cipher is already tested and uh, already all uh, crypt analysis have tried their luck on it and if i am enhancing the security of known algorithm it will be more secure right so my time will be less uh if i'm uh, going for a small change into that and then you know i can design a family of out of it like from one cipher i can design 10 uh, different thing how that i'll tell you in the next slide so uh, before going to that we will see the condition that uh, the cipher uh, what we are using for embedding uh, no like what i'm talking about embedding all the time you, i'll i'll explain you that but you know uh, first we'll see the condition it should be uh, the cipher which we are using should be uh, protected against cipher text attack but when we will embed it it should be protected against the known plain text attack so uh, and it should pass the evaluation test and uh, it should have retain the minimal efficiency of the original cipher so i'll explain this slide uh, very simply right you know there are different attacks basic attack on the ciphers first is the cipher text only attack another one is the known plain text attack known cipher text uh, attack and uh, i am not sure uh, yeah these are four so uh, in case of uh, known uh, you know like uh, uh, cipher text only attack we have uh, the only cipher text available we don't have any other information about the cipher or uh, you know uh, nothing more than that and algorithm so it is very difficult uh, in definite uh, in case of the modern uh, cryptographic alpha algorithms it is almost impossible we can say that so uh, normally what people do when uh, the scientist uh, they try to crypt analyze they consider either the known plain text or the known cipher text attack that uh, you know some of the key bits of the uh, plain uh, text and the cipher text pair is available in both the cases and we are trying to uh, uh, decipher it and we have trying to uh, break it so uh, this is quite simple than the uh, cipher text only attack so we are trying to see that whatever cipher we are going to develop after embedding should be uh, you know capable of withstand even though there are some known pen, uh, plain text cipher text uh, pairs are available for the breaking the cipher uh when we are developing a cipher we are generating a random string so uh, that is non intelligent form as we know so how we will evaluate whether my uh, whatever i am generating is random or not it should be known so what i am doing is i am uh, using an ist test suite or the die harder test to uh, evaluate this output of the cipher so it should pass that it is are the standard test nist test suite and uh, die hard are other uh, standard test uh, which are used for uh, evaluating the cipher strength and efficiency should be minimal if the efficiency is less than uh, the entire uh, uh, you can say that a structure is failed so we will move on to the next slide so this is simple of the embedding what i'm doing is uh, i think i'm running out of the time uh, professor more Yeah, ma'am. Sorry, I extended it a bit. Okay, no, you, no problem, no problem. You so can, if you, you want, can. I'll continue. Otherwise, I'll stop here. Yeah. No, ma'am, you can continue. Okay, I'll just finish it in a quick, you know, like not uh, take more than five minutes. So uh, here we can say that uh, a block cipher algorithm, simple. I have not used any uh, great mathematics here. Simple structure that is a C is the cipher text, is the encryption algorithm, K is the key, and P is the plain text, right? So I will be adding. extra parameter that is k0 with some functionality f1 and f2 and i'll generate i'll use the same encryption algorithm i'm not going to do anything i'll just add the extra key with some function and i'll generate the cipher text which is different than the original cipher you can say in the you can see it in, into this uh, you know it's a c tilde and uh, above is the c definitely I, if i'm using one function it is like a adding extra round to it and then uh, my cipher text will definitely change we will go on to the next slide what we did is uh, this uh, proposed algorithm is applicable to any i mean you can pick any cipher uh, and then apply this method like i take extra key 
functions f1 and f2 what are those function i'll tell you you can uh, uh, you know uh, you can choose your own functions uh, from the uh, mathematics and then you can have your own functions and you can do it but this is simple mathematics right so here what we did is we have taken aes which is the strongest algorithm and 128 and then you know we used it into the ctr mode there are different modes of the uh, 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 cipher or aes how to run it like you know uh, obc mode uh, cbc mode uh, ofc mode and this is ctr mode which is very commonly used uh, for the scientific purposes and we have two types of the embedding see so embedding is like adding adding something extra with some function now you uh, embedding clear i hope so so here what we will do is we will have this extra key from outside or what we will do is we will uh, generate it from the key that we have right so now we have uh, encryption algorithm embedding uh, the key that is which is required and the functions we will go to the next slide right so here we can say that uh, how we are going to do is like you know maybe in the uh, left most down con uh, down we can see this in the image that it is you know original algorithm and then up you can see that is the embedded that one function is or one route is uh, embedded and then here you can see uh, the uh, right most upper corner uh, image that you know the extra key has been given to the plain text and the key original key and here in the down like uh, for, uh, last uh, figure here key is given to plain text and the key which is drawn from the original key so these are different you know uh, ways we can embed our uh, algorithm and we can uh, uh, generate the uh, different cipher text we can move on to the next thing so as i mentioned here we will be using different functions f1 f2 f3 f4 whatever you like right so what are this function these functions can be conjugate this can be right shift this can be left shift this can be mirror effect this can be 64 bit of indices you know we can choose like one th third fifth ninth whatever and then uh, create our own keys so these are few examples i have stated but you can have your own exam uh, functions and you can uh, try to you know embed the uh, use this function into the embedding algorithm we can move on to the next right so once we have now you know designed this uh, we have chosen one function now uh, like conjugate first function then i have generated uh, the um, uh, output stream output function uh, sorry output stream uh by using aes and this embedding function and i pass this entire file and uh, as i have already stated i am going to use the ctr mode right so i have generated a bulk file i have passed it to the die harder test and check whether really you know uh, this is giving me results or it is uh, you know something which is of no use so you can see in the uh, clearly in the uh, test that it passed with no modification now that uh, the test pass is less but you know when i'm applying some conjugate function sh right shift left shift reflection then it is you know actually giving good results i mean more tests are getting passed and my cipher is getting more stronger and very less uh, uh, you know uh, the tests are failed and in the uh, in case of the reflection uh, there is a maximum you can uh, say that the test has been passed in the die harder test we can move on to the next okay so uh, i would like to thank you uh, for listening this patiently and you know i'm so sorry that i've extended your 10 15 minutes uh, so thank you so much for this opportunity and we can move on to some question answers if you have yes ma'am thank you yeah thank you ma'am over to you yes ma'am there is a one question from the student that can we send secret information without using any cryptographic tool Oh uh, no! <laughs> I mean, there we can. <laughs> you can hide, as I said, like you know, by using the steganography, you can hide the uh, information. But uh, or uh, personally, if you are uh, reaching out to that person and give the secret information, you can do it. But uh, when we are sending it over the uh, untrusted channel, that is communication channel. uh we have to use some protection because we don't know who is watching our information right so you can transmit information if nobody is watching is well and good but why to take risk always okay ma'am thank you and the 
security sorry what is the difference between cryptographic and cyber security oh okay cyber security is a bigger field you know it's like mostly consists of network and uh, networking part of this but cryptography is a mathematical field or mathematical science you can say which work for uh, you know generating the different uh, encryption algorithms for protecting the uh, the uh, data specifically the data or the device okay ma'am thank you so much uh, i think so ma'am there are no further questions from the students okay okay thank you so much ma'am for such a fruitful session Uh, and on behalf of department of information technology i extend really a hearty vote of thanks to our speaker dr shravani chakri ma'am as a precious time from a i'm sure that this webinar is definitely go at the time in our day to day life thank you so much i would like to thank actually dr resa sudha sir because of this consistent support we could successfully conduct this webinar further i also would like to thank to the coordinator Prof professor sapna bhave ma and professor s b more sir next i would like to thank professor dr s n jado sir for his valuable guidance to conduct this webinar session successfully i am also very thankful to deepa to allow me for conducting the sessions last but not the least i am very thankful to all the faculty members students for participating in this webinar session and soon we'll let you know this third session of this webinar series till then stay safe take care thank you thank uh, you so much yeah ma'am can we okay no problem because there are two questions so can we take okay uh, yeah ma'am uh, can you read ma'am ek ta ma'am if uh, yes, sir. Uh, you can you can have uh, you can continue sir Uh, just um, yes uh, uh, can we take some can we take ma'am yeah yeah go ahead actually the, there is one question is there any research on light weight cryptography using machine learning machine learning yeah. yes uh, i would like to say that actually uh, there was a paper written by ron rivish uh, very long back in 1987 where he have shown the link or the connection between the crypt analysis and the machine learning uh there is recently a group who, uh, which is in singapore they are working on crypt analyzing you know things by using machine learning so definitely there is a chance if you can you know search on uh, the um, cryptographic task force by uh, national uh, institute of singapore you will find that there are some professors those are working in the crypt analysis and the machine learning okay okay ma'am thank you ma'am one more question is there uh, what is polyalphabetic uh, encryption okay uh, so i must say that uh, the whoever has asked this question must be knowing about the cryptography uh, polyalphabetic that is uh, like you know um, and uh, now there is no example i have uh, let me think about it mm. uh, 